permission to come aboard. The film opens with a really cool submarine sequence. This is Aquaman's hero's intro to this movie. I wanted him to be very much of like a bar fighter, smashing heads, kicking knees out, and grabbing things. It's just gonna be a fun character to watch fight. He's strong. Even with that, he's super powers, he's strong. And I barely used any force on that one. <laughs> the submarine set piece was literally the first day of photography. <laughs> you know, there's no better place to start than at the deep end. First scene, I got my helmet on, my tubes. Helmet comes off. You know what I mean? It's the most badass thing I've done on film, like, thus far. The location has been in somewhat of a challenge because of how confined the space is. Tiny quarters, big wire gags, everything was steel, metal, aluminium, hard edges. It was a good way to start the film for us. We pad the sets. Like, this is kind of crazy rubber. This is all rubber. It's because a guy hits his head on it, you know? We throw people against the walls, and these are rubber stairs. We've gotten very good at molding rubber things. <laughs> Chase is great. He's really good with us and uh, looks after us at the same time because he's a big boy, so he makes sure he gives us the right amount of strength but doesn't hurt us. <laughs> Jason's a pro. He's like an expert at hand-to-hand -hand combat and things like that, so I just follow Jason's lead on that stuff. My father gets pinned against the wall, and Aquaman's freaking leaving like a jerk. So Aquaman, in a sense, chooses to let his father die. By allowing David's father to die, in many ways sows the seeds for Mantis revenge. You can't lead him like that! You killed innocent people. You asked to see for mercy. It's a great introduction to Aquaman. It's a great introduction to Jason. I think it really gives you an insight into who that character is. The idea of Aquaman coming onto a submarine and saving the day is a really cool way to introduce this character. Merc crashes down here, right? He gets up, right? He runs that way. We follow behind him. Bam, through the wall. Bam, through the wall again. The camera spins around him to his back. Right, Merc then runs down here, maybe he jumps down. And then uh, somewhere along in the hallway here, the camera goes out a window. And then we see her run, run, run. And then the camera then does a zoom back to find Arthur in the foreground here by the bell tower. James has ideas that scare you at first sometimes when he gives them to you. You're like, oh, I don't know how we're gonna achieve this. He lands, crashes, there's you know, a few cuts there. He looks up, we cut to his POV, see mirror running. Then he goes running, then our one shot thing starts. We were talking about his conception for months. We had people running and jumping down a set of stairs, landing on the ground and keep going. And James wanted to do it as one continuous shot. The Merc Run sequence was a really fun one to design. We would kind of have like miniature rooftops kind of laid out, you know, cardboard boxes, and then toy figures that we would jump from places to places. And I would talk about, you know, where we wouldn't want to put the camera. Right, I like the idea of being on a cable cam that go with him. We go down and without cutting, right? I want it to be an experiential moment for the audience as well. And so they're not just watching it from outside looking in. I want them to be inside as well. Whenever we do a one shot, it's not to show how clever we are, but to say, come with us and be with us on the journey. John McAfee is this amazing second unit director, and I work closely with him, trying to work out, you know, what's the best way to shoot that. Preparation is everything for this. Come the dry run before you hook up. Go. We have tested in our early stages our camera technology, our visceral feeling of how we want to capture it. A million things do have to go right. Good, more videos on the frame. James captures one shots that, you know, no one would dare take on. Yeah, man, the one. But, you know, he'll challenge you to do that. And we did it with quite a few sequences. That one in particular was amazing. It's a one shot from start to finish. Three, two, one, go. With the camera guy following in tow. They're both on lines, they're running through walls, they're getting connected from one system to another as they turn. Uh, no! 
Balconies. Woo! Woo! Oh God, brother! Yeah! If I have three different set pieces happening at the same time, I love to sort of find way visually to kind of bring and tie them all together in post-production. And we start out with that long Merc run, and then at some point we leave him, and then we go see who it is that he's chasing, and that is Mera in this case, running across the rooftop. We transition into a shot where we track upward and find Mera running on the rooftops. We blend that with her running, being chased, jumping over things. camera keeps pulling back. Then we go to Arthur and Black Manta at the end. It's all over the place. And so that just adds to the visual interest of the sequence. It's hard to reinvent the wheel, but I think what James really does well too is give you a different way to view the wheel. have a sequence when we're on the sailing vessel. And we're being thrashed about in the middle of a tempest. And the conditions were very real. We're working under a torrential downpour, which is exacerbated by the fact that just to get rain to read on camera, it can't just be a normal rain. It has to be the equivalent of a fire hose <laughs> pointed straight at you. It's a great sequence with Arthur and Mera on the boat getting attacked by the trench creatures, and it is pure horror. And James loves that stuff. Pulling off the kind of horror and suspense and all the traits that you need to make a great horror film, he's got that, which is awesome. I definitely love the trench creatures because it does allow me to hug back to my horror roots. And so I went all out and basically made those sequences just monster movies, like just sea creature monster movies. <laughs> yeah, I think they should have their own movie. <laughs> <laughs> we had limited vision with the costumes. We had guys on stilts, a six-way motion base on a ship, tons of water. It basically was the perfect storm of what you don't want to have to deal with. It was tough in that water, in that rain, in the wind. They're jumping on and off boats, fighting with Jason, fighting with Amber. When you're in the rain and the boat's moving and the lights go off, that's fun. You're in it and you're being real. But from the depths, the scan of the light! It was a lot of fun. That was like real movie making. Throughout that whole sequence, it was James' idea to use the lightning to like strike the water and light the water up from underneath. And so you get this beautiful subsurface lighting quality where you get this sort of emerald green coming through. And it just takes what can be like a very sort of abstract, featureless, stormy environment and gives you these moments where you get like super clarity. You know, that there's like a huge wave out there and it's backlit and you can sort of see through it and it makes it beautiful. The trench sequence was one that I really wanted to create a visual look that looks like a split screen of the ocean. You see them with their red torch swimming down and just tens of thousands of trench coming in and following them down to the bottom. It's just an awesome shot. That part was really fun for me, trying to come up with a cool approach to digital filmmaking and to kind of challenge myself to do stuff that I haven't quite seen before. When the trench was swarming underwater, James is like, oh, wouldn't it be great if they're just like doing this sort of corkscrewing, double helix sort of pattern? It's really cool, really well done. We treated these creatures like pack animals, where they work in a cohesive sort of team kind of way. And it just took it from something that just sort of felt like, you know, flocking or swarming and just gave it a lot more visual interest. So it was a fun one to uh, dive into. <laughs>